Turkey Cultural Enrichment. Um, tonight we have uh, Miss Edith, Edith M. Knight, Cherokee National Treasure. Edith M. Ketcher was born in 1939 to William and Lula Jackson Tonight Ketcher have, uh, of the Piney Edith community near Stillwell. She's the youngest of six children. She had three brothers and two sisters. She has four girls, six grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. She attended grade school at Chalk Bluff School, walking two miles to school, and completed two grades in the same year, seventh and eighth. She did her homework by kerosene lamplight at night when she went to Stillwell High School, she had to walk two miles in a different direction uh, from home to catch the bus. They caught the bus on the road now known as Orchard Road. She enjoyed school, graduated high school in 1957 and wanted to go to college. There was no transportation and no money so she didn't get to go to college. So she couldn't go to college so she got married. She married Owen Knight in 1958 and their daughters Lisa uh, their daughter Lisa was born in 1959, Karen in 1961, with two more girls joining their family, Diane and Nikki. She went to uh, work at Stillwell Fo uh, Foods. She always had the desire to be a lab technician. She got her chance to become a lab tech after working at Stillwell Foods for three years. Her opportunity came from their need for a lab tech for thermal processing. Stillwell Foods set up a class for her with Mr. George Clark in NSU to learn microbiology and then attend the University of Arkansas to learn thermal processing for canned goods. She became a lab tech for Stillwell Fo uh, Foods. She served as registered EMT for two years before Robert Funeral Service. EMTs worked with the doctors and law enforcement. EMT service was started by Reverend Scott Bread, pastor of the Indian Methodist Church in Stillwell. They had to go to prior for phone conferences and classes. They had to be and were deputized. Edith and Owen Knight, her sister and husband Zona and Richard Flute, Reverend Scott Bread, his wife and son, another lady Eunice Hawks, all worked for the EMT service at night. They would stay at the church. They would work all day, sleep at the church, went on call. Her mother taught her to sew, how to gather, and tradi prepare traditional foods. She loves to sew. She looked over clothing, and people would tell her about her clothing. Uh, when her grandchildren came along, she started making traditional clothes for them. She was designated Cherokee National Treasure for traditional clothing in 1992 by Chief Wilma Mankiller. She had won several food judging contests. Her hobbies include sewing, cooking, fishing, and camping, going to yard sales, and trying new foods. She always enjoys learning new skills. Ladies and gentlemen, Edith Knight. Nutmeg, yes. 
And of course, you know, there's pig nuts, and we don't want to have anything to do with those. Those are so bitter. Uh, when they fall from the tree, they will, when it's time to harvest them, they fall from the tree, and as they hit, the uh, outer shell will mostly likely, most likely will uh, come apart. I just, I was lucky to find these that someone had in their freezer so that we could make some kanachi tonight. Because <laughs> what we gather would be too green to do anything with today. So you put this in boiling water and it'll just come apart. It'll break apart real easy. You boil it for, I don't know, maybe, you got to boil it at least 10 minutes so you get rid of all the bacteria that may have you know, get it on there during handling and when we pick them up and all that kind of stuff. So I cooked uh, this today about 45 minutes. I, I wanted it to get a little thicker. But it didn't. Well, after you get it cooked, after you get your connection ball cooked, you start straining it to get the holes out. And I... I put it through a, like a colander first to get the bigger stuff out. And then I put it through a sieve and make the, to make the slurry with. And I go ahead and cook this and it's, it begins to get a little thick after you cook it for a while. And after that, you can either put it with your rice or a hominy. A lot of people like it with hominy, with salt. But I, my family likes rice with sugar. so. We're going to let you taste of some here in a little bit. We'll put it back here in the back. You have to make a big bunch with one ball. will make that much. Put the holes in there. But if you can see this, usually when it gets cold, this... Uh, juice on there will thicken up <coughs> and if you have any left to go in the refrigerator but uh, a long time ago well i don't know how long but uh to get these kicker nuts down to a usable size they would uh, pound the uh, nuts to, get them to a smaller one and then put them in there and pound it and this these blocks are called canones and i'm sure this has a, probably a name too but i just call it pounder i don't know what the turkey name for it is <laughs> do you do, do they have a, a name but uh you just keep pounding it till you get it down to the uh consistency that you want and then you start sieving And it's ready to put together to make your your uh, kanachi. Uh, I brought some with uh, hominy. I finally found me a place where I could buy some cracked corn. I looked all over the place. It don't 
it don't be everywhere. <laughs> That's one thing adult Walmart doesn't have. <laughs> uh, but uh, a lot of people like salt on theirs, on that, on with the corn. So, uh, okay. uh, Kevin? Might, you not be, might, might not be up to it tonight. Kevin, would you pound a little bit there? Oh, oh. We need a nice strong volunteer. Here, here's 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 We went around and looked at some that other people had, these blocks or the canons. So Owen, my husband back there, he made this one for me. And I see that uh, some of them have a bigger bowl. And uh, this one just makes it easier for me to pound with a smaller bowl in there. Would any of you like to pound some of this to see what it feels like? <laughs> Here, I'll hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Get a hold of my like a bat. Drop me, man. Make sure we hit the wood. <laughs> They're showing pictures behind you, Miss Eve, at the today. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well. Now, now, you don't hit it with this big end? No, See, I would I think know. I would do like this. No. That's the weight. That's the weight. weight. Oh, okay. Now, I'm just going to. Oh, you missed it. No. Hey, Mark, I got a little more in here now. <laughs> That's why they have the bigger bowl, I'm sure. How do you keep it from going everywhere? Well, you just... That's the bad part. Yeah. Really? Because, man, I was getting ready to get serious. Oh, man, that's where I'm getting worse. I better quit. There's not going to be anything left. Let me go back to this, and y'all quit ragging on how hard I'm hitting it. Small little bitty stroke. Yeah. There you go. I noticed. <laughs> Don't rub it in, Mark. <laughs> I'll clean it up that door. Yeah. All right. Most of the time it's done outdoors, it's not done indoors. Yeah. We'll have to do it on the porch. Maybe. Somebody else is going to have to straighten this pile up. I don't think that's I did all right. that great. Man, that's Just hard to do the thing. Just so we can see what, what they used to do with it. <laughs> uh, this, I have another friend that makes the, the uh, balls. He puts some. He says he has a bucket with a rock in it, so that he can just keep a pounding and uh, they don't go all over the place. So it's just. And I have a friend that just uses the rock. And you can also do the crack your own corn that way. That's good. So that's that's about the process of from tree to pot. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? Yes. Plenty of trees still. I had a guy ask me last week about trees. You know, and I never really thought about it. And I said there used to be. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And I said, you know what? I'm going to ask somebody if there's still plenty of trees because I I was unaware if they were or not. That's what I've done. I've, I've asked several people, have you got 
kick trees on your place, you know, or, you know, and uh, they don't have it. But, uh, Seemed like they used to be everywhere, but I hadn't, I hadn't really paid attention. Yeah. Are some of them, some of the nuts are bad, yeah. right? So you just have to look at them and you kind of determine if they're bad or not? Okay. Pitch it out if it's bad. Okay. And then I can tell, you know. This sieve doesn't get rid of all of the shells. So, how do you. And obviously, the, your sieve doesn't get rid of all of the. Uh, your sieve doesn't get rid of all of the shells. So, how do you. I, I do it in that? a two step. I, I take the. Uh, just a colander, and that'll get the larger hulls. And then I go down to a, just a, a sifter like. And that, that'll get it. Okay. And that that's after you run it through both sieves. What was the name of the big hickory that it is? Mocker. Uh-huh. And we found I found I found another one down on her place. And I don't know what it's called, but it has a funny shape to it. It's huge, but it's yeah. look how tall that one is. But I don't, I don't know what it's called. I, just, I need to find somebody that knows about hickory nut trees. One of these has a comparison of the two. Sorry. <laughs> See how, how they're different? They're tall. They're tall. And then this is the little nutmeg tree. Okay. This was nutmeg. Mm -hmm. That's the nutmeg. Uh, that one, it may crack easier, but it don't have very much uh, meat and nut meat in it. This one, the reason I like this one is because it's got a lot of nut meat in it and it has a better flavor. We tried one of those longer ones and it... Uh, it's about like the mockers in flavor, but it has a bigger compartment. Uh, I wish I had one sawed in half so you could see it, but I don't. I don't recognize the tree even uh, that much. I think they're kind of getting like the, uh, uh, the birds, the things we got when we get with birds. The little, what I was trying to call. I'm sorry, I was talking to you I didn't hear what you were talking about. <laughs> no, no, the, the little, little, Nut in it has got is in a bar. Oh, chestnuts. Yeah, chestnuts are bigger though, but these are. Uh, oh, so, uh, here's another one. Uh, chinko pen. Chinko pen. How can you not forget a chinko pen? I don't know. I don't know. We used to go by this big old tree before we go to school, and we'd fill our pockets with those chinko pens and. Throw them in each other. Yeah, well, no, we hate them. <laughs> Had to sneak around and eat them in class. <laughs> but there's, there's a few people that's trying to bring the, the uh, chinga pen back. The question is, uh, is hickory the only tree that you put in that? It would certainly have a different flavor. So, and the uh, walnut would be a lot more oil in it. It'd be pretty oily. They're better in 
Um, cookies or something like that. <laughs> Do you guys have any more questions for her about the kanachi? Do you know any other recipes you usually serve it? You have to have the mic. <laughs> I don't have any, or I don't know of any. This is just all, it's all the family wants right here. <laughs> Years ago, um, when I was doing that, several years ago, when I was doing that, years ago, um, several years ago, a lot of the elders would make hickory nut pie instead of like a pecan pie, they would make a hickory nut pie. So you can't make pies with them. But you have to sit and pick out the goodies <laughs> to do the same as you would a pecan pie. This would be good. Guys, if you don't mind, if you would hold off on talking till we break, I would appreciate it because we're still trying to film. Sorry, thank you. Ms. Knight, how much would you have to gather in order to make one connection ball? Um, I'm. I'd say maybe a half of a Walmart bag. Uh -huh. About a gallon, half a gallon, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in Oklahoma, we understand that measurement size. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I. That picture where they had the new filter on these? Yeah. Yes. This picture right here, this picture with the wheelbarrow, they figured, Mary Jo told them that she thought they would get it 28 balls out of that. So that's how many it would take to make 28 for one, probably that corner right there. They usually store the connection ball. That's with the shell and the pulp in the freezer. Yes, uh -huh. And then when you're ready to serve it, you Kevin, we need her to explain the grape dumplings. So are there any other questions? We're going to have uh, samples later. Uh, uh, can I mm -hmm. Now Sue Wolf is going to talk about uh, grape dumplings. Wait a minute, I have a question now. Sure. That's fine. Uh, it being sweet, I'm probably sure. I'm sure it, it is sweet. Yes. Uh, 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 you can make, uh, you can use the corn grits and put salt on it. That's the way a lot of people like it too. But I prefer the, the sweet, I guess. Some <laughs> children seem to like it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I know one of my great granddaughters, she'll say, Big Gran, when are you going to make us some more Kanachi? <laughs> Is there a place where you can buy the uh, Just usually from individuals that uh, have uh, made them themselves or, or uh, they'll put them in the street. Like I said, I was lucky to find a friend that had some in the freezer. I've looked everywhere. No, I don't have any left, don't have any left. And he happened to have maybe eight or ten. So but he had he had counted them himself.
Yeah. How much would a Kanuchi ball go for? Usually around $10. $12. $12? Mm -hmm. There's a question back there, Kevin, as well. That's what I was going to say. It's kind of hard to find the price. Some of it's $12, $15, $20, depending yeah. on the size. But a lot of families have them for their traditional meals. Uh, it depends on the size of the ball, too. You may get a small one, you know, you, you just have to kind of look to see what, what size. Now this is a, this is probably about an average size of one I have here. It weighs maybe six inches, maybe half a pound, I think. Yeah, it's about six Great, thank you very much. And now Sue's going to talk about great pumpkins. We have lots of samples, right? Okay, on a great sampling, how many of you know what a... We call them possum grapes. Yeah. Okay, they were called possum grapes, winter grapes. They're hard to find anymore. So I know where there is some, I know where there's a few, but they're not ready. They have to be frosted on just like a persimmon before you use them. The grape dumpling was made kind of like a noodle. So they would take the grapes after the frost, they get a little sweeter, they take it and the twigs and boil it. Then you just like you run it through a sieve for the kanuchi, you run that through a sieve. And once you get that grape juice boiling, some of them used plain water and made a dough. I use sugar with the grape juice and make my dough. Um, it takes a lot of the grapes to make any juice to make anything with. So you almost have almost would have to get a bushel in order to get yeah there you go and they like I said they have to be frosted on before they're sweet if you try to get one before then that's worse than getting a green persimmon <laughs> <laughs> So these, you don't see many anymore. I've seen two trees, and I know where one is that I can reach that I can't reach from the other. But um, I did bring some made with just the regular grape, unsweetened grape juice that you buy off the store, out of the store, so you can taste what a grape dumpling is. Some of the people are now buying, going to, Tawny Town, when they have their grape festival, they buy their grapes to make jelly with. You can use that same type of grape. It's going to be sweeter, so you don't have to use as much sugar. So, that's what a grape dumpling means. It looks like something like this. Something like that. There, that's more like mine. So we have samples for you. They are samples of kanuchi made with the rice and with the hominy. And then we have some grape dumplings for you to sample. And you made the, the, the dough out of flour, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just all-purpose flour with a little bit of grape juice. Like I said, years ago, they just used flour and water and just made a dough out of it. While you're sampling, I also brought some old time bean bread. And a little bit of salt.
too bad it's not early spring so we can have onions and eggs. <laughs> dumplings was because they wanted something sweet and that's basically what it is it's a dessert it's just like a pie without being in a pie only with the grapes are not quite as sweet as you would get a normal pie because you don't add as much sugar if you add more sugar you're going to turn it into the thicker soup and then you make jelly so you can make jelly out of this as well Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's trying to give that back to me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I just did. Mine. Okay. So you make those. Like that thing. picture. Me? Mm -hmm. Here. Yes, she asked does she make this quite often, and Sue said yes, she does. Oh, look at this back there. No, it's okay. Are there any more questions about these traditional foods? And if not about these, they might be able to answer about something else. I'm not sure. I'm not supposed to have a wishy here, but I didn't get here. Can you talk about it? Edith can. Miss Knight, can you talk about the wishy a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this time of the year, we have uh, a wild mushroom called wishy. And it has a, it kind of looks like the top of a, oh, a broccoli or a cauliflower. It has little flowers, florets, and uh, it, sometimes you can find them pretty good size, sometimes they're just small, but they, they really have a good flavor to them. Um, you take those and you tear it apart soak it in salt water because they have so many little crevices in there, those bugs like to get in there too. So you soak it in salt water and then rinse that off and then uh, when you feel like you've got all the bugs out of there, it's time to fix it. <laughs> I like to deep fry mine. Just roll it in flour and fry it in deep, deep oil. Uh, that's about the way I I fix my new pictures in a different way. Um, I learned. Here's how they're shredded. Uh -huh. I shredded. learned something about wild foods, natural foods. Wishy, poke, cochan. You cannot really cook those in oil because there is a toxin in them. And if you cook them in oil, no matter how hot it gets, it will make you sick <clears throat> because how do I know? One of my uncles, when he first became diabetic, the nurses come out and started teaching them only use oil to cook with. My aunt had gathered some cochani and some po. If I'm cooking wishy or poke or cochan, I'm using lard or bacon grease that gets hot enough to actually destroy the toxin. So you know the choice is yours, but <laughs> I prefer not to get sick over my food. Any questions? Where do those grow? He said, where do those grow? They will grow anywhere on a tree. Usually it's a dead tree or one that's dying. You can find them on the bo toward the base of the tree, at the foot of the trunk, or at a fallen tree. There's been a few times that you can find them on a log, similar to that size that's just been cut. Um, there are several types of wild mushroom. Of course, you have the morels that everybody knows. Uh, you have the wishy. There's an owl head, that slick head there. There is a puffball. 
There's also one called a deer antlers. A lot of people, what I call an owl head, will call them a hoot owl because they're two pieces together, just like an owl's eyes. So that's a morale. And you find those in the spring. They just pop up, Not especially ever. after warm, warm rain. rain. But they're only up for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're only up for a day until they're too dry mm -hmm. to eat. That's true. We usually find them around Easter time. Mm -hmm. The wood. I was trying to see. I don't see. This would be more of the puff ball in the bottom that they would get. The, right, or, right here. Yeah, because the white one, what we look for, or what they always told me to look for, was look underneath at the ribbing. If it runs like a little rib, that's a good mushroom to eat. But if it's not, don't eat it. Like that. Like Membrane. On the bottom. Mm -hmm. See? They would always tell me to look for that and make sure that it was that way. And like with any, like you do the wishing, you soak any mushroom. And it's better to soak it anywhere from an hour to overnight, if depending on its size or how many you have. And that's to remove any insects, any dirt, whatever happens to be in that mushroom. And you right soak now, it in salt water? Uh-huh. And you'll find when you're soaking them, they'll float. So my mom always taught me to put a plate down, put something on that plate to hold it down, to hold them in the water. That way they stay in there. She usually soaked hers overnight before we ate them. So can you freeze the mushrooms? <coughs> you can freeze it. Uh, once you've had it, got it shredded and had it soaked, you can freeze it. Do you freeze it? I always froze it inside the, the brine solution. I am, um, we never did. You just, right, just, okay. That way whenever you thought it's moist, all you have to do is flour it, salt and pepper it, and fry it. Was this the deer antler? The deer antler looks just like a deer's horn. Okay. Oh, it's right back. Yeah. That's a deer antler right there. Yeah, that's a real deer antler. <laughs> <laughs> There's meat behind that one. We need some meat with that one. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, they're hard to find anymore. Um, last year, one of my friends' son found a few. And it's the first ones they had found in years. Just like any, like with the grapes or anything like that, due to people clearing land, spraying, they're killing it out. So they're beginning to be harder and harder to find. there any way you could uh, grow those yourself if you could get the if you probably could get a spore started yeah. and have that same type of soil or ground yeah and i was always taught when we're gathering to shake them out mm -hmm. so that you know where to come back mm -hmm. yeah and today i know several of my friends when they find a wishy even if you stake it Two-legged <laughs> two <-legged> deers. 
And if somebody knows where there's some, they won't tell you either. Any more questions, guys, anything? Yeah. Any questions at all on traditional foods? Did Do not eat the poke berry. <laughs> poke berries are poisonous. But they make a good dye for the basket weed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you twice boil, like to twice boil your poke? Or? She asked mm -hmm. if you boil the poke twice, and Sue said yes. Some of them do. Yeah. It's Some better that way. The first time you do it, it's clean. For a second time, you've made sure that there's nothing in it, and you can, after you boil it. What I do is after I boil it, I have hot grease, switch it from the boil pan to the hot frying pan, scramble it up with some eggs, and then I'm through. Oh, you better know where you're getting that poke. <laughs> yeah. Like just the top. Well, they're making me hungry. <laughs> well, the well, you can do that, but uh, there's a lot of the elders from the way back that still like fried poke stock. To them, that's just like eating okra. In fact, I have a couple of friends that the, they'd rather have the stock than the poke. Mm -hmm. Do you get a watercress, too? Mm -hmm. And you get all the ticks and chiggers you can you can carry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Copperheads. Watch out, water moccasins. <laughs> Especially if you're around the springs. <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry for the folks viewing this online, but uh, we're going to cut away and we're going to eat some of this. <laughs> so that's the good part of being face to face instead of online. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Good night, everyone online. Thank you, Miss Knight, and thanks, Sue. Don't go.